and I've loved all types of those subgenres and I'm just hoping there'll be more and more subgenres that will come into existence. Yes. I mean a lot more coming out like blur, split second. They're kind of like um things like Project Off and Paradise yeah. but they you know they're they're a lot more um branching into their own mm. kind of gameplay. I mean what was it, split second? You can actually Split Second looks really cool. Looks really, really good. Even Blur, I mean again Blur people say it's kinda of like a Mario Kart. I mean, even after playing Midnight Club mm. um the last week, week or two, Midnight Club had these um what do you call them, these special abilities where you yeah. could knock off some opponents off the, off mm. the road, you could uh, EMP them so all the cards don't work for a couple of seconds. So yeah. it's very similar to Mario Kart and from what I saw the gameplay from E3 of Blur, yeah. it, that was very similar. But um, we'll see what... Yeah, what, can't forget Mario Kart as well when you're talking Mario about racing. Kart, That's yeah, just yeah. legendary, man. Yeah. I mean, not even on every platform it's come out on, it's mm. been like a leading racing game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the Game Boy, the DS, the Wii, I mean, mm. that game has just been consistently really good. Yeah. And I hope it continues to do so. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, what's your favourite game of the genre? Um, Can you choose one? Uh, that's <laughs> tough, man. It's, I'm kind of torn between choosing a classic game or a new game I've been recently playing. But if I had to choose one game, it would probably be Super Mario Kart on the SNES. Because that was the actual okay. first one that yeah. I got into. Mm. I just loved it. I mean, I just played it every day. <laughs> I mm. mean, I had the game. Yeah. And I got the most out of it, the most enjoyment I've probably ever got out of raising it. <laughs> yeah. Even though it's so simple, I mean, yeah. when you think but about that's, it. But that's kind of the, you know, the hook of it. It's simple, yeah. but it's addictive as well. Yeah, so I'll probably yeah. go with Super Mario Kart. And if I was to choose a more, you know, newer generation game, I'd probably say Burnout Paradise. Cause but you can't because I said you can choose one, so trust <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, my one has to be role playing games. Uh, they've clearly brought a lot to the industry in terms of storytelling, um, uh, even gameplay. Like, obviously, a lot of game games have the term, 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 term based, based strategy. Term based, yeah. Term based. And um, even like Lost Odyssey now, I mean, that could have easily have gone to an active battle system. Mm. <clears throat> but it didn't. Um, and story as well story wise I mean Final Fantasy 8 had an amazing story personally my favourite one and if I had to choose a game in the genre would be Final Fantasy 10 the 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 turn based gameplay was basically for me at least was basically perfected it was it's really really good the Mm. story was amazing the cutscenes were just awesome yeah um so I, I believe that in terms of, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Bioware even took, you know, some hints from um, Square Enix when creating Final Fantasy games, how to create a good story. Because mm-hmm. seriously, if you've played Final Fantasy X, pacing is just second to none. It's just yeah. probably some of the best pacing in a PS2 game yeah. out at the moment. I mean, when you say the word RPG... Final Fantasy always comes into that's the it, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's probably the first. I mean, obviously, <laughs> things like Bioware, they're pushing it quite as well. So, obviously, when you say, oh, you do someone new mm. nowadays, the first thing they'll think of is um, Mass Effect or, yeah. you know, Kotor, the, you know, the Knights of the Old Republic games. And um, uh, creators of Fallout as well. Fallout, is it? Uh, Obsidian. Uh, Obsidian. Yeah, Obsidian, yeah. Yeah, they're doing pretty good as well in terms of RPGs and stuff. Yeah. Okay, yeah. next is by a Red Tank. Um, what are your thoughts on Left 4 Dead 2? Is it too soon? I, I, put, I, I think it's way too soon. Definitely. I think they're taking liberties with... Um, well, obviously they're going to EA now, so I'm thinking EA are personally taking liberties with the Left 4 Dead franchise. Um, they think they... You know, they want, personally, I think they wanted to see what their reaction was with Left 4 Dead 2. And from the reaction, if you saw the E3 press conference, people were just baffled as to why they even had a Left 4 Dead yeah. 2. Even now people are kind of warming up to it because they're showing a ton of new features, new modes, new features, new zombies, new weapons, new setting, new characters. Uh, it could kind of, you know, be said it's a, a sequel mm. because it's got so much new stuff. But didn't they honestly say they were going to back up Left 4 Dead 2 a hell of a lot more yeah. a hell of a lot more than what they were doing they're saying that they, they are going to that they're going to they said give us a couple of months we're going to release some new content yeah. and then in about 12 to 14 months well, that's the thing now that they've announced or you know given a teaser to Left 4 Dead 2 people automatically think oh, they're not mm-hmm. going to 
the the quality is not going to be there for Left 4 Dead One now. But apparently, they said they have. And they said in about a year's time, they're gonna they're gonna see that all this uh, uh, jumping up and down about Left 4 Dead Two is going to disappear because we, as gamers, are apparently going to get it as to why they released Left 4 Dead Two. We we'll just have to wait and see. Then I mean, what yeah. else can we do? Shadow Blade says, "Crisis for consoles. Will it fail or succeed?" Um. I think it will succeed because the one problem that Crisis had on PC was people getting it to work properly. Mm. <laughs> and I think on the console, obviously there won't be that problem at all because it will work yeah. the same on every console. Yeah. But how about the only game? difference will be that if you need a hard drive or not, which I'm not sure yet. Oh, yeah, but I mean, true. apart from that, I think it will do really good because I thought it was fantastic on the PC. The graphics were amazing, graphics gameplay was really good. good. But do you think the gameplay will kind of... Um, obviously we know the Xbox, for example, is an excellent platform for first-person shooters. But mm-hmm. do you, I mean, again, you played Crisis on the PC, you both yeah. uh, Do you feel that Crisis games need that mouse and pad uh, movement where it's really, really fast? Yeah, because don't that's... forget, you've got the gameplay, which is maximum speed or maximum strength. Especially with the maximum speed, you kind of mm-hmm. need that quick... Agility movement. Quick turns and so stuff. do you think that will help? Obviously, you can move up the sensitivity of the of the of the character on the consoles, yeah. but how far you know will they need to? For the hardcore it? gamer, for the hardcore person person shooter that uses, I mean, a lot of them use mouse and stuff, mouse yeah. and keyboard. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I think it will definitely be more of a casual approach taken to that game when it comes out on consoles. It won't be as hardcore as PC, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, even still, I think I think will definitely succeed. Yeah, definitely. I think it won't be a problem because it's already on PC, and I think more the casual audience probably go for it on mm. Xbox and stuff, PS3. Yeah. So I think it'll be yeah, I think it'll definitely work. It'll be, it'll be a success. I can't see why it would fail. Yeah. Dixie had a similar question to Shad. Uh, sorry, had a similar question to Red Tank, um, and they said, "Do you think that Valve should support Left 4 Dead One?" First, like they promised before releasing part two. Of course. Yeah, again, I think they should live up to their word. Otherwise, why should we trust them for Left 4 Dead Two? Yeah, I mean the company is pretty tr- trustworthy. I don't know if that's the right word to say. I mean, if we look at Team Fortress Two yeah. for for the PC especially. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't remember how many updates they've made for that game. It's yeah. ridiculous. I mean, new new characters, new. Add on for the characters, new weapons, new tweaks, new, just a hell of a lot. Mm. But do you think this could be the same route for Left 4 Dead 1? Mm. Or do you think they're going to obviously support Left 4 Dead 1, but then to a lesser degree? I mean, that's what you automatically think when mm-hmm. you hear that there's a sequel coming on the way. You think they're going to you know, support the first game less now. I mean, that's what I always think when mm-hmm. I hear of a sequel. Yeah. And it makes sense. But I mean, as long as they churn out a lot of DLC yeah. that will keep people occupied, yeah. then I think it won't be a problem. But I mean, I think announcing it was a bit of a problem. I mean, it's created a bit of a problem with yeah, games of the I, first game. I think if they announced it at something like TGS, which would not have been in their favour, mm. but I'm saying if they, if they announced it towards that time of the year, and then in that time, they released another yeah, Left 4 Dead 1 expansion pack. Definitely, yeah. Like a significant one. Mm. People would say, you know what? They're still backing up Left 4 Dead mm. 1. And, definitely, definitely. And, and, yeah. and in the time they were creating Left 4 Dead 1 expansion pack that they gave us, they were working on Left 4 Dead 2, so they, you can kind of see their loyalty where, where it stands. Mm. But again, releasing it this early in the year, the teaser, I don't, know, I don't think it was... Um, yeah, they should have waited trip. and backed up the game a bit more and then mm. announced it, that's what yeah. I think. Thanks for your questions. That's going to be it for this episode. Um, it's going on for quite long, almost an hour yeah. now. Hopefully, we've kept you entertained. Yeah. And um, educated. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, if you have any more questions for next week's episode, please put them in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions on how we could make this better, maybe we could um, reduce the amount of topics and make the podcast a little bit shorter. Um, But any comments or questions you have, please put them in the comment section below.